Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Marketo Foo. Uh, today, on today's episode, what I want to talk about is just basic program setup. Uh, you know, again, filling out kind of the basic things you need to know in your Marketo toolbox. So as we look into uh, my sandbox again, cool. You know, I have here a number of programs that we previewed in another video when we started to talk about program types. And the one I want to look at here, just for sake of argument and setup already, is this event program right here. Uh, so you can see I have some naming conventions uh, deployed throughout these, and I'll, I'll have a whole separate uh, quick chat on what those are and what those what those mean and why they're important for you. But you know, basically, when I talk about program setup, uh, there's obviously the setup tab here, which we'll get to in this video. But I also mean just basic foldering conventions. So like whether where you have all your emails stored and any landing pages or uh, lists or anything like that, uh, and smart campaigns. So the one thing you'll notice, and even though this is an event program, this is a, a useful uh, convention for any type of program, is when you have uh, various assets, and with the exception of being an engagement program, you won't have sending campaigns. But um, you know, clearly tying 01 email to 01 smart campaign and naming them things that make sense, that it's going to be easy for anyone to pick up and understand. Um, one other folder that I don't have here that I should is uh, you know, one for progression statuses. So similar to how we talked about um, on a previous video when we had the various uh, um, channel tags and whatnot, uh, with, with the status progressions and all that, and which ones were successes. We want to make sure that there are smart campaigns listening for certain actions in the program and then marking them uh, appropriately, that moving leads to the next stage so we can show progression through the funnel and, and, and also attribute uh, program success the right way. So um, a lot of times those might even be baked in to, to these smart campaigns, but just for sake of clarity, uh, I like to have it, have it a little separated out. And then the next part here, and the last part for this video, is when you go up to the Program Setup tab itself, uh, here again is where you can select what channel this is in. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention on channels in the other video is once, once a program has leads, you can't change the channel. Uh, you can, but you have to back all the members out and then change the channel, then import it back in, and then you have to worry about setting the right statuses and all that. So it's it's a headache and a process, but it can be done. But generally, you want to make sure that you have the right channel chosen uh, when you create the, uh, the program. So in this case, I had party, which uh, for the sake of this hypothetical example, the NRF Big Show is one of the biggest trade shows of the year. Um, so it's definitely not a webinar. Uh, we'll call it an in-person event with our, with our current uh, current channel tags. We'll click save, but then if I wanted to slice and dice this another way for future reporting, I could pull in other tags and select them from a drop down. So uh, this is an example from the other video on, on tags and, and progression statuses. But um, you know, I can further subdivide this. Now, obviously, these are nonsensical. That's not what NRF is about. Uh, actually, no retail. It works, <laughs> but. Uh, you can you can add in the reason you added different tags like this is when you get into reporting later, um, you can basically categorize by programs that contain this tag versus you know I could compare programs that, that are about bracelets to programs that are about earrings to uh, you know any number of tags. It just further enables uh, more fine categorization of programs. And the last thing you could you want to add in is if there's any costs associated. So like this one's easy. Like trade shows, there's always a cost associated to trade shows. Uh, say you know you take your booth costs, any um, uh, any other uh, asset development, and then you can add these things in here, and then you assign them to a month. And then how that's going to work later in reporting is they're always going to be assigned back to. Uh, the, the period cost is always going to be assigned back to whatever month uh, the cost occurred in. So um, if we add another cost for you know collateral or something, uh, when a lead achieves success in this program, we go back to report on it in the future. We're going to be able to pull these numbers in for an ROI analysis of like, okay, this lead eventually resulted in X revenue. They were influenced by this program, this program, and this program. 
which had costs of this, and then it divides out like how much ROI did each individual program have. And to be honest, we're gonna have to do a whole separate video on, on just that subject um, at a future date, and it's gonna be on more of the advanced series. But uh, for now, uh, this has been a very quick primer on pr proper program setup uh, from foldering to uh, the actual setup tab. And I uh, look forward to talking to you guys again soon on a future video.